In this session, let's learn some terminology related to our recovery manager. Okay, target database. Whenever we call target database in the recovery manager, that means this database is the one which we are backing up or performing the recovery. Okay, next one, media manager. So normally, most of the times we take the backup on a disk, but we know disks are little expensive than your tapes. Using RMAN, we can back up the data into the tapes, which is a cheapest option. But if RMAN has to back up the data into the tapes, we need a special kind of a software. That special kind of a software is called Media Manager. This Media Manager software helps the recovery manager during the backup and recovery operations. Okay, this is really optional to use. Only if you have to use tapes, then you need to use the media manager software. Otherwise, we don't require this. Next one, recovery catalog. Normally, whenever you perform backup using a recovery manager, the recovery manager generates a lot of log, right? All this log is stored in the control file by default. It is stored in the control file. So what? That's the question, right? Yes, we know control file is very important for other operations and we don't want a lot of backup and recovery related information stored in the control file, right? So what's the good method? The good method is creating another database which we can call as a recovery database in that recovery database, we can create a schema to store all the recovery manager related activities. That's a good idea, right? Yes. So this recovery catalog is nothing but a schema which is configured in a separate database to track all the activities performed by the recovery manager. Okay, once we create this recovery catalog, we will register that recovery catalog with the target database so that from now on, instead of storing the RMAN related activity in the control file, it stores in this recovery catalog. Okay, and we know it is optional. If you don't configure a recovery catalog, it will store in the control file. The best practice is to configure a separate database and create this recovery catalog scheme. Okay. Next, retention policy. In a recovery manager, we can have a retention policy. Retention means the amount of time we need to keep this backup before deleting. Okay. If we say the retention is 10 days, the backup needs to be stored for 10 days before we delete. Yes, such kind of a retention policy can be set in the recovery manager. Once the backups gets older than the time specified in the retention policy, all those backups are marked as obsolete. Once they are marked as obsolete, either the DBA can manually delete those backups or we can configure to automatically delete the obsolete backups in the recovery manager. Okay, this retention policy is very important. Depending upon your organization need, you need to come up with a good retention time. Okay, next one, parallelism. So this one, as the word says, we can even perform backups in parallel using the recovery manager. If there are multiple number of disks or tape drives, obviously we can do the backup in parallel. If you have only one disk or one tape drive, we cannot do the backup in parallel. In big organizations where there are multiple number of disks or tape drives, we can perform the backup in parallel mode, making the backup quicker. Okay.